because they view violence different. They view it different. You can shoot a guy two times here, and it's violent. You shoot a guy two times there, you see the bullet go in, the bullet come out. That's not violent. That's action. Here it's violent. There it's action. That's, that's the difference. You know, we, they, the bullet goes in and come out the back. Here the bullet goes in, and guys are hiding their face, man. Blood stuff flying on the screen over there. They start applauding, especially in, 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 in the Far East. The more blood, the more applause you get. A head would go off, the arms would fly off, they applaud. That's, that's the Far East way, man. So it's just the way that they view it and the way that they look at it. Well, it's just the way that they look at it. It's just their, their mind is not so close to the fact that this is not real. This is something on the screen. Here, man, I mean, everything that happens bad on the screen, they think it's a, you know, it, 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 it applies to what's happening on the street. And I totally disagree with that. Well, I think it's Americans' inability to to understand that it comes from parental guidance and, and the parents first. They want to blame Hollywood for all their problems and for all their inability to control their own kids. European families are close-knit. It's, it's identical to what it was many years ago. There's yes sir, yes ma'am. You come to dinner at 6 o'clock. There's a certain time to dinner. Everybody will come to dinner at that certain time. Everybody has a schedule and they do it. The defiance of parent, of being a parent and the defiance between the, the children and the parents doesn't exist on the same scale as it exists here. That's parents' fault. I mean, they lose their kid at five years old, six years old. You see some kid screaming and yelling in a restaurant, you know? I mean, why can't they shut him up without, you don't have to hit him. I mean, back in the day, I'm from the old school, you didn't scream in the restaurant, man, they'd give you a look. Mother give you a look, that was it. Uh, I better shut up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? It's different, man. I mean, how many kids today say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am? Right to their parents, you know? It's like they call them by their, I seen them call them by their first name. Hey, Mary. Hey, Joe. I mean, kids calling their parents by their first name. I mean, that's absurd. That would never happen in European families. The European families are much closer knit than that. And that's the difference between what's happening, between how they view the films, and there is no correlation between what's happening on their screen and what's happening on that street unless they want to blame somebody else for their ineptitude. Then I'll buy it. Nineteen ninety Bronx Warriors was about a week in New York and the rest was some of the ruins in 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 Rome. But the way that they cleverly did it was go from one to the other in in such a way that you never knew you were outside of New York. It always looked like they went underground and they went to some old beat up neighborhoods that looked like ruins in New York, but it was actually ruins of, uh, in Rome. So the way that he shot it, he mixed it up very well. So you never knew you were in Rome. You always thought you were in New York. There was a lot of strange people on, on, on this film, on, on, on Bronx Wars. I mean, Mark Gregory was, uh, he made no footprints in the snow when he walked. He, it took him a long, long time to teach Mark how to walk. And if you watch him closely when he makes these long walks, he walks very, stiff and straight up to keep from making that swishiness that he had because because Castellari made him met him on the street he was not an actor he was a guy he was a bodybuilder he, he saw him in the gym and he says come on I'm gonna make you an actor and he had a great physique but he made no footprints in the snow and back in 85 I mean it wasn't cool then because it everybody wasn't out of the closet at that time but everybody is out now so it's cool but in 85 it wasn't as cool it was a lot of work to get Mark uh, to, to stop that swishy strut. Every Italian that speaks English don't understand English. So they taught him to speak the words, but he didn't know what he was saying. So he had no emotion when he spoke because he didn't understand what he was saying. He was speaking English, but he didn't understand that what he was saying. So that's why his performance came out flat. Uh, at that time over there, you had Chris Connolly and, uh, and my other buddy, over there, who is uh, Vic Morrow, work all the time in Italy. I mean, they made 15, 20 films every year over there. They were working all the time. They never left. Chris Connolly never, never left, and neither did, did Vic. It was a week after we finished this film that Vic was killed. First of all, the young girl, the one that was kidnapped in the movie, is Castellari's daughter. The other girl uh, at that particular time was somebody that was handpicked by me that uh, that was as tall as I was, and I figured we, could, we would look good together. Her skin was really pale, 
really white. So I figured she would look good because I had this dark, this blue, this blue uh, outfit on. My shirt was a bright blue, and I had these uh, shiny leather pants and tall boots, which was stuff that I brought from the states. So I figured we'd make a pretty good, uh, pretty good team together. And uh, I'm, I'm good at I'm I'm good at discovering people, <laughs> especially when they're tall and blonde like that. Yeah, I'm good at I'm good at discovering people, <laughs> especially back in the day. Back in the day, it was uh, it was all. Uh, more cleaner fun, you know. Yeah, that was her first Born film, and she was she was very good because she had went to an English school. He had put her through an English school in in uh, in Rome, so she grew up speaking English as well as speaking Italian. And that was her first film, and she was very good in the film. She was very, I mean, you could tell she understand what she was saying because she her emotions were right, the words were right, the expressions were right, which again was a problem of Mark. He just didn't understand what he was saying, but. She was a very good actress, and she, and she was sweet. She was uh, she was willing to learn. Yeah, I got to know George. George, he, I mean, he was he's a very dedicated actor. You know, he can be a little over over serious sometimes. You know, you have to like this is this is this is pretense, dude. You know, you have to like bring him down sometimes. But uh, he he uh, he throw some punches that that. Uh, you know, it was supposed to have been left, right, left, right. It would be left, 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 right, right, right. Whoa, George, come back, man. Come back here, you know. <laughs> you know, let's make this thing real. Let's either fake it or make it real. <laughs>